Hey everyone, I'm Connor here with our Wildlife Ambassador Series, and with me is one of my favorite Pokemon, I mean animal ambassadors, Rosalie the Red-Tailed Hawk. Uh, Rosalie here is an animal that I've been working with for almost two years now. She came to the Wildlife Center in 2016, um, and she is an animal that was never a patient at the Wildlife Center. She is one of the few ambassadors we have that was actually transferred to us uh, from other centers around the state. Um, now, it's very, very easy in her case to see how she gets her name called a red-tailed hawk by that really beautiful uh, red tail feathers that she has. Um, these birds typically get that plumage as they mature. And Rosalie here is being great. She's just kind of keeping an eye on me because she's very <laughs> interested in the food that I have right here. Um, and she she is non-releasable, so this is an animal that's not going back out in the wild. She'll spend the rest of her life here at our center. We don't know exactly what happened to her or how she was injured, but we do know that she sort of has a, um, a false joint in her hip that has caused some arthritis and some other issues. That is something that we can manage here at the center to keep her very comfortable with some care and medication, but certainly wouldn't be something that we would want to release her back in the wild with. Now, every single day um, with Rosalie here, we'll go to her enclosure and bring a, a nice little uh, pouch of food. Usually her, her food consists of dead mice, um, rats, chick, um, occasionally some other foods, but that's the main, main portion of her diet. And we'll usually cut it up into small pieces that we can use for training. Um, because every single time we work with these animals, we do try to, to do some type of training session with them. Training might include coming out into the hallway where we can do a foot check on them to make sure that their feet are healthy, or it might include coming out on the glove outside like this for programs to get them ready for off-site events, or maybe people coming here for a tour. Um, so there's a lot of training that we do with them to get them ready for something like this. <laughs> Just reaching for some of, her, some of her food here that kind of fell to the bottom. Um, but she's, she's doing a great job. I would say she's one of our ambassadors that is, is pretty far along in that training process. She's pretty comfortable coming out for programs like this, meeting people and encountering new experiences. And it's really a great opportunity for people to get an up close look at a bird like this. You know, in the wild, people have probably seen red-tailed hawks before. They're very common, especially here in Virginia. Um, but have they gotten an up close look like this? Not likely, and it's really a great chance to, to learn, learn more about these animals. They are the, the largest hawk that we have here in the state of Virginia and the largest hawk in North America as a whole. So they're very, very large birds. Um, and you can see that they do have fairly large talons. Um, in the wild, what they will often do is perch somewhere like the edge of a forest where they can scan open fields for any of those small animals that would scurry along. Things like uh, mice, rats, voles, squirrels, small mammals. Um, and then when they see them, they'll swoop down, capturing them with those really large talons that they have and have a nice, nice meal for themselves. Um, but this behavior can also get them into trouble sometimes because what we do know is that rather than perching on, you know, next to an open field, these birds will often perch next to an open roadway because that is a, another great area that they can see animals very easily. But sometimes when they swoop down to capture them, they accidentally get hit by them in the, uh, hit by a car or a truck or some sort of vehicle in the process. And that is how many of our red-tailed hawks come in hit by cars or many of our raptors in general. So that's one of the most common causes of admission uh, for these birds. Um, but it's not the only one. There are some other issues that we occasionally see with them. Um, sometimes they do uh, ingest lead, something that we're putting out in the environment and get a little bit of lead toxicosis. Um, sometimes they uh, collide with windows or sometimes even birdhouses on occasion if they're uh, trying to fly after something that they're going to catch and they fly right into it. Um, and various other causes as well, but those are some of the more common ones. So. It's really, really important to have education ambassadors at our center so people can not only learn more about these animals, 
but learn how we can better coexist with them and make sure that we're keeping them safe just through the actions that we're taking. Um, because there's really, really easy and small things that we can do every single day to help keep these animals safe. Um, in Rosalie's case, something that, that we can do to help keep uh, raptors safe is just make sure to not litter and also remember that no litter is safe litter. Even things like apple cores, banana peels, um, anything like that that we put out in the environment, especially if it's near a roadway, is going to attract a lot of small animals and birds like this will again swoop down to capture those animals and sometimes get hit by cars in the process. So that's just one example of a very easy thing that we can all do to help keep these birds safe. It's been really, really great to bring Rosalie out for programs because it's one thing for us to tell people that red-tailed hawks, look at that, oh, that got in my mouth, Rosalie. That was a little gross. <laughs> um, it's, uh, it's one thing for us to tell people about red-tailed hawks that are in trouble, to tell them the kind of issues that they have. Um, but it's another thing entirely to meet a red-tailed hawk up close who actually encountered that issue. It just really helps hit the message home, helps people realize that this really is an issue. It's not just a talking point. There are actual animals that are affected by these things. And that's what Rosalie is doing. By, by coming with me to programs, um, she's, she's helping us to, to teach people that, to teach people ways that we can better live with these animals. So she's making a huge difference for red-tailed hawks in the wild and all sorts of animals in the wild as well. So she's doing a great job as an ambassador. And if you're in a close-up on her face right now, you may also notice that she has a little bit of bed head right now. She's got that little feather sticking up, which I've seen that the past couple days. So I don't know, maybe she's in the process of molting a little bit, I think, and that might be a little hangover from, from her molt. But uh, the last thing I'll mention is I think she's ready to go back in her enclosure because she knows that I've got a really large chick in here for her as a nice little reward for coming out today. So I think she's pretty excited. So we better get going. <laughs> thanks for watching. Uh, I know you're tuning in for Rosalie and not me, but thanks for joining us for this video. And if you really enjoyed it, uh, like the video, leave a comment and subscribe. Thanks so much. You could be a Pokemon.